The Solar Podcast is brought to you by Continental Energy Solutions. I'm your host, Tim Montague. Today on The Solar Podcast, instant permitting for residential solar. My guest today is Anson Moran. He's a repeat guest, and he's now with the Illinois Solar Energy Association. He is heading up the ICEA's initiative to roll out Solar App Plus in Illinois. Welcome to the show, Anson. Thank you, Tim. Happy to be here again. Yeah, great to have you back. And you've changed hats uh, since last time we spoke, but give our listeners a real uh, brief intro to your background. You have a storied background in the solar industry, and we're thrilled to have you at ICEA now promoting Solar App Plus. Uh, and just to note, we did uh, interview Becca Jones Albertus, who heads up the Solar Energy Technologies Office, just a couple of weeks ago on episode 115. So our listeners can check that out as well for the DOE perspective on Solar App Plus, but this is going to be a, um, you know, nitty gritties. How does, how does a municipality adopt Solar App, why you should do it, and how this benefits the residents of Illinois? Um, so, Anson, w- tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, absolutely. So, I, I've been in, uh, involved in solar energy for going on 14 years now. I started as um, running a low voltage subcontractor in California where we installed perimeter security at utility scale solar plants. And I was always uh, looking to learn my customer's job. So I started learning about uh, the monitoring side, uh, which we integrated with a lot of that low voltage technology at the utility scale solar plants which led me to my next role in a, in a move out to Illinois with Medio Control. I was the CEO of Medio Control North America, which is a PV performance monitoring platform, hardware and software, data acquisition, uh, really exciting stuff where I got to get a little nerdy with solar, which was wonderful, wonderful eye-opening experience. Uh, from there, I moved on to uh, a role with Tesla, solar here in here in Chicago land where I was an installer over the winter and I gained a deep respect for for the folks working up on the roof and especially in Chicago Tim you know we're sh- shoveling snow for half a day before we get to uh, slap glass as we call it and run conduit so it was um, kind of solar crossfit it was a lot of fun uh, then I moved into their permitting and inspection department which uh, where I really learned a lot of the challenges uh, of uh, permitting and inspection, inspecting solar. And that led me to my role now as the Illinois Solar Energy Outreach Coordinator for ICEA. Excellent. Well, we are so lucky to have you here in Illinois. And I'm uh, I'm just tickled that you are now promoting Solar App Plus. This is a this is a very important initiative to shorten the time that it takes for solar projects to get a permit from the AHJ, the authority having jurisdiction, whether that's a city, a town, a county, whatever the permitting authority is. When you want to put a solar array on your roof, the installer typically is going to uh, get a permit. It's a construction project, right? It's like getting a new roof or getting a HVAC system or getting an addition on your house. It's not a huge project, but it is a project. And if the permit takes 30 days, that means that that's going to slow the project down. You know, and the other the other key piece of information here is that solar installations cost two times in the U.S. what they cost in other developed parts of the world, including Australia, Germany, and the U.K. And what that tells us is our soft costs are just too high. We need to figure out ways to reduce the soft costs of solar, and Solar App Plus is an initiative targeting that. So, from uh, from the horse of uh, from the mouth of the horse, what is Solar App Plus, and who is the target audience? Yeah, thank, thanks for that. Um, so, Solar App Plus is a instant permitting platform online. the The app stands for Automated Permitting Platform, and the plus is for the features that will be added in the future. So. Uh, right now, it is just for cookie cutter systems 
uh, that are about 80% of the residential solar market. You know, it's, it's um, currently it's not storage. It's not EV chargers. It's not um, uh, main panel upgrades, but right now storage is being beta tested in Honolulu. So that will be added soon to solar app main panel upgrades will be included in instant permitting very soon as well. Uh, the idea is to address the, the largest part of the residential solar market. Uh, with e the uh, most important adopters are the municipality and the contractor. Right now, I encourage all Illinois residential solar energy contractors to go onto the NREL solar app website and sign up. The, um, and municipalities as well. Municipalities go on there, sign up. It will advance the, thank you, Tim. It will advance the, see up in the register in the top right-hand corner. Yeah, so oh. I have the solarapp.nrel.gov website on screen, and you can see that there's main links for jurisdictions, for installers, about solar app, and solar trace. So uh, you can just hit that big blue button, register, and, um, and then it will guide you through that process. Why, why is this going on in Illinois though, Anson? Of course, solar app is now being rolled out uh, nationally and give us some context on the initiative in Illinois. Sure, yeah, Illinois is a big target for, for solar app. There's eight states that receive grants, grant funding to, to move forward solar app in their states and Illinois was high on the list because we have the most soul smart designated municipalities of any state in the country. What that means is that we have about um, 47 municipalities in this state that have taken concrete steps internally in their building departments to become solar friendly cities. And they jumped through a lot of hoops to achieve a designation anywhere from bronze to gold, depending on how many points they achieved. And um, yeah, so that's a really good head start for taking this next step, which is really a moonshot. It's, um, it's a lot more progressive than the original goals of, of Soul Smart. When you say it's a lot more aggressive, why why is this more aggressive? I'm, I'm it, I, I just want to capture this. Absolutely, yeah. The the Soul Smart goal for permitting departments was to turn around residential solar permits within three days, and that's a great goal, but it's not instant. And instant adds a lot more value to to the the customer the contractor and even the, um, the permitting office because they don't even have to touch these permit application reviews. It happens automated. So they could take those resources and put them towards more complicated projects. It only takes about an hour to for a review department to look at a, a solar permit application and approve it. Uh, but a lot of times these permit applications sit in a queue behind more complicated projects, which leads to a longer turnaround time. Cool. So, yeah, I mean, Soul Smart is is also a program of the DOE, and um, and and so they've been doing this certification with authorities having jurisdiction, right? With cities and towns around the US. And Illinois has been a, uh, an early adopter of Soul, Soul Smart. We have, uh, is, is it true that we have the largest number of Soul Smart cities or something like that, right? No, that's correct. Of any state in the US? That's right. Oh, it's amazing. We have a, a great uh, Soul Smart staff here in Illinois. Yeah. And so, and so it's a no brainer for the soul smart community to adopt solar app, right? That that's a complete no brainer. That's the low hanging fruit. Um, so I'm, I'm curious though, let's walk through how you, what is the dialogue that you have with jurisdictions and what is the process for them to embrace the solar app? What are the pain points and, you know, points of friction? 
Yeah. So uh, I'm doing direct outreach to municipalities and um, <clears throat> oftentimes, you know, I, I approach the the building department, but also some of the elected officials as well. I like to speak with different environmental groups in the neighborhood or in the community as well, like uh, Sierra Club, Air and Water Board, to name one, uh, DuPage Clean Energy. And, you know, these are the, the folks that have uh, vested interest in their community uh, to advance solar and make solar more uh, saturated in their neighborhoods. The, um, it's really easy for municipalities to adopt. The, the first step is, is uh, a short demonstration with myself and an NREL representative where we go over the technical details to adopt solar app. Uh, there's a standalone platform, but also an integrated platform. So this, if uh, uh, an AHJ doesn't already have online permitting, they could use the standalone platform where contractors go directly to the website you just showed, take about uh, 30, 45 minutes to enter all the information of their project. And, and if, it, if it conforms to the, um, to the requirements, they pay their fee, their permitting fee, but also a $20 fee for solar app on top of that. And 100% of that $20 goes into updating the software and adding new features. Yep. And then they get their permit instantly and they're out building. From the inside the municipality, it takes about an average size municipality, it takes about 10 hours to set up their, their solar app portal with unique um, variables about their uh, building in their municipality, like snow load, for example, wind load requirements. Mm -hmm. So, and the ROI is really simple. If it, they know how many solar residential solar permits they're processing and they could just compare that with how long it takes them to, to process a permit. And it's really clear, uh, the value internally to the, to the municipality. Yeah. I mean, this is going to automate the permitting process so that they're not spending, uh, person hours you know, evaluating permits and pushing paper, right? The computer is going to push the paper for them. And uh, it's, it's the same outcome, right? You've got a safe solar installation. It's just much quicker uh, for everybody involved. And so everybody's going to save money, including the installer, the customer, the solar customer, and the AHJ. Yeah. And you mentioned safety, which is really important. This platform was built by code bodies like the ICC, Underwriters Laboratory, NREL, so, and of course, input from municipalities. So it was built by engineers for engineers. It's not a shortcut and safety is a, a key element in this, in this platform, making sure these are safe projects. Because in the end, municipalities and the solar energy community uh, were allies in our desire for safe communities. Are you uh, uh, are you able to get feedback at this point in the game? F you know, so far has what has the experience been, both before, during, and after? You know, onboarding. Yeah, you know, it's um, it is changing course for municipalities is difficult. I, I would say it's difficult for anybody to change. Um, and this is really kind of radical uh, in the perspective where um, it, it doesn't require a lot of the, the checks that, that, uh, are, that municipalities are used to. And to release control over something is difficult. But in the end, they also, Solar App also develops a uh, permitting inspection checklist for the municipalities. So there's always the, the inspection is still traditional. There's a checklist for them of the things they would be looking at on a site plan, but now it's in checklist form. So they, a lot of, some municipalities are also going remote inspections with, with a phone due to COVID. And also the online permitting also allows some protection from, from um, physical interaction with COVID. What is the connection to COVID? Oh, uh, it's a lot of the permitting offices went online 
permitting just because of COVID because they didn't want contractors coming into the office and have that traffic. Okay. Um, and solar app is a tool to help give that distance both on the permit application and during the inspection. Got it. Got it. And as we were talking in the pre-show, ICEA has received some support from some, some uh, well-established solar organizations. Can you talk a little bit about how this work is being funded? Yeah, the, the, um, this work on the municipal level is being funded by the Solar Foundation and in concert with the Interstate Renewable Energy Council. Two very important organizations, the Solar Foundation and IREC. <clears throat> now, so how many municipalities are there in Illinois and what what is the plan for onboarding them into solar app what is what is the goal and and uh what what is the you know one year five year outcome in your in your mind so the, the program is really new tim uh secretary granholm just announced the kickoff of the program and the official opening in the middle of july so right now there's well there's 1,000, about 1,300 code ish, uh, permit issuing municipalities in Illinois. At the beginning of Solar App, it's it's only ad uh, adoptable by municipalities that are on NEC 2017. So now that brings us down to about um, about 50 municipalities that are currently Sol Smart or uh, correction Solar App compliant. Uh, we're really working on those municipalities for early adoption. There, um, we also have some uh, some activity happening on the on the federal level. the The White House just announced the Biden administration just announced that. Um, Soul Smart or Correction Solar app is going to be a big part of their goal to reduce uh, the cost of solar. You know, I think it's it's about represents about thirty percent of the reduction that they're that they're targeting, or more. Actually, I think it's closer to seventy percent of the reduction that they're targeting to drive down solar costs. Um, the DOE Secretary Granholm again has announced the summer of solar, and there's a lot of push from the federal level, but more importantly, what's happened, Tim, is that on the municipal level, the um, Metropolitan Mayor's Caucus just created a climate action plan, uh, a regional climate action plan. And this is from the municipal level up. And some of the, some of the goals for this climate action plan include addressing soft costs. And this is the tool to do that, you know? Um, so I think, there's a, what there's 147 municipalities that are part of the metropolitan municipal, um, the MMC. So this really just fits into into that plan really well. Excellent. I need to make a quick announcement. We are promoting a fundraiser for ICEA here at the Solar Podcast. If you go to IllinoisSolar.org and click on Win a Tesla. They are raffling a Tesla Model X. I'm going to put the website here on screen. And they've been doing this for eight years. Uh, this is the eighth drawing that they're ho holding for a uh, Tesla Model X. This is a luxury, pure EV. And it is the creme de la creme of EVs made in America. You can buy tickets for $100 a piece or you could buy four tickets for $300, which is a really good deal. So please go to IllinoisSolar.org, click on the win a Tesla link. I will also put a link to the team CES specific link uh, so we can get credit in the show notes, but please go to IllinoisSolar.org, click on the win a Tesla and buy some raffle tickets to support Midwest Solar and the work that Anson Moran is doing here, spreading the fast permitting movement in the United States. You know, we've hosted a series of, of interviews with uh, folks at Blue Banyan, 
and um, several others. I, I'll, th I'll think of him while I'm talking, Tom Tancy, <clears throat> right, with Sunspec Alliance out in California, which is really, uh, those two organizations are focused on reducing the soft costs of solar, uh, starting in California, but now working nationally. And Solar App is, is very much part of this ecosystem. I'm only, I'm only a uh, bomb dancing that Solar App is not available for commercial because we truly need that. And I'm dying to have a conversation with our friends at Panel Clock because they're also working on one-click um, engineering and permitting for commercial rooftop solar. So if you're listening, Costa, please, let's do that interview. We need to do that part two. But uh, tell us more, Anson, about how, you know, what, what is your day to day and how can others, whether that's installers, um, nonprofit organizations, you mentioned, you know, there is this cadre, this team of organizations in the clean energy space, including organizations like the Sierra Club and, uh, you know, community specific organizations, but how do you, uh, well, yeah, what can our listeners do to get involved and, and help you? Well, if you, if, you're, if you are a residential solar energy contractor, like we mentioned, go on to, we have the Blue Angels practicing back there. We, uh, go on to the website and register your company uh, because showing municipalities that the contractors are behind this program will go some, will go um, will be leveraged to encourage them to sign up as well, the municipalities to sign up. So that's the biggest thing you could do right now. If you're a member of the Illinois Solar Energy Association, we have a business committee committee where we're working together to develop internal strategies and um, to address the topic with municipalities and put pressure on local elected officials. Um, but in the end, we're really just looking for allies internally and externally in of municipalities to to push the topic forward. Um, it's this is the I think the next biggest component to reduce the cost of, of solar energy, residential solar is energy. It, who is it generally? Who is the executive, so to speak, at a city? uh that would make this decision about embracing solar app yeah you know it varies from municipality to municipality uh it ranges from from uh the building and zoning commissioner um you know sometimes the mayor the mayor or people on the city council could could move move the the project forward internally and you know in some municipalities it's actually the fire chief that could address these topics. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. And on the, uh, if you go to the solar app website, you'll see a, a video there that, that the DOE put together with interviews with mayors from major cities uh, like Houston, I think is, is one of the mayors that they interviewed. And um, these, these uh, city officials have very glowing words for solar app when what it's done for their community. When you think about it, if we can reduce the cost of solar, it makes solar more accessible, right? Bottom line, solar is still out of reach of many consumers. So if we bring the cost of solar down, then your consumers can embrace it. And every rooftop solar array makes the grid more reliable and uh, more cost-effective for the entire community. There's now credible evidence that when we green the grid, we actually make the grid a cheaper piece of infrastructure for the entire community. And of course, then we're, we're greening the grid, we're you know, reducing air pollution, our dependence on fossil fuels, which is a big deal here in the Midwest where we have a lot of coal power. And um, we now have the, the technology, right, to completely green the grid with wind, solar, and battery storage, we simply have to uh, install, 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 but also bring down the cost so it increases access. 
So that's what this is all about. What else should we be talking about when, with regards to solar up? What else do people, whether they're installers or AHJs or allied professionals, what do people need to know? Um, I, I think people need to know that this uh, that this next step of instant permitting is is just the beginning of instant permitting, and uh, there's potential to address topics like commercial, like you mentioned earlier, Tim. Uh, but we need to make this a successful rollout, and we need to have a a, a unified ask of municipalities to cut this red tape and, and move forward. Uh, but municipalities also need to understand that this is actually, this is also an economic recovery tool for municipalities, that it's gonna benefit the uh, their cities as well. Last year, um, the after the beginning of the year, the number of residential solar systems installed in Illinois after the funding cliff dropped dramatically. And uh, when I was with Tesla, some of the municipalities were reaching out asking, where where are all the permits? What, what's, where are all the permit applications? What's going on? And it's it became very clear that this isn't solar energy, residential solar energy contracting is an important source of revenue for a lot of municipalities. It makes up a significant share. In fact, in Naperville and um, 2020, solar energy contractors were the largest revenue uh, generating contract contractor discipline for the city above home building, HVAC, all the other ones. So we are an important part of the, the economic uh, generating tool for municipalities. And this is even going to help municipalities even more on that side. Yeah, I'm glad that you mentioned the funding cliff, because if you're a resident of Illinois <clears throat> listening to this podcast, it's vital. We, here we are in August of 2021. It's vital for everyone in Illinois to understand that we have wonderful legislation in Springfield that is going to put Illinois on a path to 100% clean power by 2050. It's now called the Governor's uh, Climate and Consumer Energy Act or something like that. We call it the Omnibus Bill. But all of your state legislators need to hear from you that this is vital because without this legislation, the industry is, uh, it's not on hold, but it is on pause per se. And the residential solar industry is still ticking along. It has ticked down. And the commercial in industry has experienced quite a bit of friction because the incentives are not flowing right now. We need more incentives in the market and this legislation is going to unlock those incentives. What we're talking about is 30 to 40% of a system's price tag coming back to the system owner in the first uh, year for residential in the first five years for commercial. It's a very generous incentive. Everybody in Illinois is contributing to this on their power bill. And it's a, it's a uh, you know, it's, it's one or 2% of your power bill that you're paying. If you just look at your power bill, if you're in Ameren, ComEd or Mid-American territory in Illinois, you'll see this. And, um, but we need to, we need to increase that funding. So talk to your legislators and help Illinois get back on track. You know, we have a 25% RPS today, renewable portfolio standard. The goal is 25% by 2025. We are not on track to meet that goal. Now this new legislation is gonna increase that goal to 100% by 2050. And that's really, that's really the name of the game, right? 100 cities and states around the country, Anson, have already put a stake in the ground. And so, if your city or state is not on track to be net zero by 2050, you're really not uh, you're not keeping up with the sustainability initiatives around the around the country and around the globe. And and you know here we are also on the tail of the IPCC report that came out last week, which is really uh, letting humanity know that this is now a code red situation. We cannot rest on our laurels. We have to act. We have to make the energy transition faster um, than ever before. So with that, 
uh, in our in our last few minutes, Anson, what else? Uh, I mean, I think it's a wonderful call to action to simply go to the <clears throat> Solar App website. If you just Google Solar App, S O L A R A P P, uh, you will find the Solar App website. This is an NREL website, and then click register. Whether you're an installer or an AHJ, and um, and it's that simple. And then. Uh, municipalities in Illinois and across the, and across the U.S. will start to get on board with this, and this is going to reduce the, the cost of solar. Any other parting thoughts, Anson? Well, uh, I just I think the 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 last point I just want to make is that it's really encouraging the Metro. I uh, just want to reiterate about the Metropolitan Mayor's Caucus Climate Action Plan is that it, I think it's unique because it, 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 it approaches the topic from the municipality, which is probably the best place to address um, tangible change rather than, you know, a lot of things happen from the White House and that's great. Uh, but that's from the top down. It's really difficult for uh, federal to mandate down to states and from states down to mandate to mandate climate action down to municipalities. So I think that's a really good, a good place where we're at. And I think it's a good way to a good. It gives us good momentum and a tailwind into solar app. Yeah, I'm glad that you mentioned the mayor's caucus. If you don't know about this organization and you're in uh, Northern Illinois in the Chicago, you know, and it, this is kind of the, the Collar County region, including Lake County, McHenry, Metro West, there's a Northwest Conference, there's a South Suburban Mayors and Managers Association, there's a Southwest Conference of Mayors and the West Central and Will County. So this whole swath uh, around the Chicagoland area and and um, does the does the caucus include Cook County? I would be surprised if it doesn't. But um, yes, it does. Chicago's uh, a member of the caucus. Yeah, and they have a whole variety of initiatives, um, and the environment is one of them. So, but they have initiatives on transportation and aging and diversity, equity and inclusion, economic development, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So. Hopefully we can get them to come on the show and talk about this climate plan. Um, I'm looking forward to learning more about that. Is that it, Anson? Are we, are, we, are we good? Or is there anything else our listeners need to know? I think that's good. All right, wonderful. Well, I want to make a couple of announcements. <clears throat> you can find all of our content at cesnrg.com forward slash podcast, where we are interviewing... Uh, researchers like Paolo Suarez on solar plant performance. He has uh, created a device that improves performance monitoring of solar plants. There you see Becca Jones Albertus, who I mentioned early on. We were talking about solar app from the DOE perspective. Nick Blitterswijk is a community solar developer out of New York and Toronto. And uh, so, so many wonderful interviews, architectural solar, uh, solar art, Expanding Midwest Solar, which was an interview with Mark Pruitt, who is the founding director of the IPA, the Illinois Power Agency, about the economic impacts of the Path to 100 legislation, which has now pretty much been folded into this energy bill that the governor is working on. So please subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up, and uh, reach out to me. I'm always looking for guests and topics to cover, but if I don't hear from my listeners, I don't know what kind of content you're looking for. So please reach out to me. You can reach me on LinkedIn. If you just Google me on LinkedIn or TG Montague on Twitter, or you can also contact me through the cesnrg.com website. With that, I will say, let's grow solar and storage. Thank you so much. Anson Moran with ICEA, the Illinois Solar Energy Association. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, Tim.